you're thinking about specialty right now as a pre-med student. Whereas the question you should be asking yourself is what is the decision that I need to make that will affect me as a person right now? Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? Mighty fine. Mighty fine. I love it. What, what can I help you with? I'm applying to HPSP right now. And what I'm looking at is what are the odds of me matching into a competitive residency for specialties that are more difficult to get into, even in the civilian mm-hmm. field, especially neuro, ortho, and really any kind of surgery. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's going to be just like the civilian world where it's going to be competitive. Um, I, I don't know how competitive. I don't think the military releases any of that data. I think at the end of the day, and it's funny, I, I had a previous Ask Dr. Gray um, earlier today, a very similar question. At the end of the day, I don't think, I, I understand the question, but you have to ask yourself first and foremost, do you want to be in the military or not? If the answer is yes, then you figure it out as you go, understanding that you may not get the specialty that you want at least the first time that you apply. And you'll be okay with that because you want to be in the military and that's the route you're going. The question typically stems from students who do HPSP to pay for medical school don't really want to be in the military, but want to have the benefits of not having any debt. Uh, And so you're more concerned about your career than the military. And if you're more concerned about your career, then I will tell you to tread carefully going the HPSP route because it's not in your control. Applying to residency as a civilian, if you didn't do HPSP, isn't fully in your control either, but there are a lot more options in terms of numbers of programs and numbers of spots available. So theoretically, it increases your chances of getting into one of those spots. It's just going to depend. Well, what about the options for uh, if I weren't to match into my first choice of residency um, I know about your background mm-hmm. as a flight surgeon. So what would a, what would those duties entail? You'd be working as a doctor, as a flight surgeon. So you'd be uh, uh, taking care of pilots and their families, depending on the base you're at. You're, you're basically a preventive medicine doctor. You're a occupational health doctor. You are a family practice doctor without going through family practice residency. Uh, you kind of do it all, which is, it's pretty awesome. Would I have odds of matching into a competitive civilian residency after serving as a general medical officer? The same you would potentially have anywhere else. The The goal would be to stay involved in whatever you potential career that you're interested in stay involved in research if you can do that because research is a huge part of residency applications uh stay networked and and connected to residency program directors or or anyone involved in residencies and and if you did your time and got out and then applied for residency i think that's perfectly fine i know one of the the docs that i served with uh actually a couple of them one is an er doctor um, he, he did a ER residency after he does his uh, aerospace medicine time in the military. And the other one is a physiatrist now, a physical medicine rehabilitation doc after doing his flight surgery time, aerospace medicine time. So again, it all depends on who you are as a person and, and what qualities and traits and skills and all that other stuff that you bring to the table. And again, the the goal of HPSP isn't to just get free medical school. It's to go and serve as a military doc. And if if that sounds appealing to you, then you just figure out the rest and you're okay with some detours along the way, potentially. Well, what, I'm sure there's a little bit of bias here, but I have applied both to the Army and the Navy HPSP. Is there a particular branch you would recommend for uh, any particular reason? Yeah, the Air Force. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
although I didn't apply to the Air Force. Why not? Uh, initially, I was okay. There's um, for one thing, there's kind of a family tradition with the Navy that eventually did stop. So I am a bit partial to the Navy in that respect, but also. Uh, although I know I would be an officer and they would be, well, they are enlisted. There are a few friends I have that are currently serving in the army. So there are those weighing in. I am the way they've advertised it to me. It seems like there are more options with army and Navy than the air force. I don't know how accurate that is, but options in I terms of what residency positions. Mm. Yeah. Potentially d- depending. It j- It just depends on um what residency you're looking at i think when when i was looking at ortho back in the day the air force had one residency program the army i think had two so it just it just depends but again don't you're 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 kind of putting the cart before the horse right the right. army is very different than the air force is very different than the navy and you're looking at it from I think I want to be an orthopedic surgeon, so let me pick what's best for that. And you may hate the army, but oh, look, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Are you going to love being uh, deployed for for three out of the four years that you owe them or more? But hey, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Maybe I'm coming at this from the wrong angle, but something I'm looking at is, yes, I know my mind is likely going to change Mm -hmm. multiple times over while I'm in medical school. But I know that what I currently am looking at is extremely competitive. So maybe I should try to gear myself more towards, if nothing else, shoot for the harder goal, or at least set myself up the best for the more difficult specialty. Where, whereas if uh, if I were to shoot for something less competitive, I might not yeah, make it. Yeah, you're you're know. so. In my opinion, right, having gone through this, I think you're thinking about it all wrong. Okay, you're thinking about specialty right now as a pre med student and trying to dictate your path to a specialty that you may change your mind at, as you just said. Whereas the question you should be asking yourself is what is the the next decision that I need to make that will affect me as a person right now? That first decision is signing up for the military or not, applying for an HPSP scholarship or not. Do you want to be in the military is the first question. Okay. Yes or no? Do you want to be in the military? Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you want to be in the military so that they'll pay for medical school or do you want to be in the military because you want to serve in the military? I want to serve in the military. Okay. So first question, do you want to be in the military? That's a yes. Okay. So second question, obviously, is do you want to be a doctor in the military? That seems pretty obvious, right? The next question is which branch of the military do you want to be in? Not thinking about specialty, Do you want to be in the Navy? Do you want to be in the Army? Do you want to be in the Air Force? Do you want to look at the new VA HPSP? Right? I don't know if you knew about that. The Veterans Affairs has an HPSP scholarship now. So you're not really serving in the military. You just go to the VA afterwards. So that's, that's a little bit more limited. That's newer. Let's assume Army, Navy, Air Force are the three options. Without worrying about residencies and which programs they have more of and what are by better options and more competitive fields without worrying about that which branch do you want to be in first second third i don't know i've that's been looking at this the from next, the wrong angle so much yeah. that i don't know that's um, the next question you need to answer for yourself Okay. Because being an orthopedic surgeon in the Navy is different than being an orthopedic surgeon in the Army is different than being an orthopedic surgeon in the Air Force. Yes, obviously the surgeries that you're doing are going to be the same, but where you're doing it, your lifestyle potentially could be completely different with all of them. And one you'll be miserable and one you'll be happy. 
And I can't answer that for you. I don't know which one you'll be happiest with. You may love the army. You may love being deployed for, for 11 months out of 12 months for every, every year that you're in. It just depends. I, I, I knew an orthopedic surgeon. I, I forget if he was Air Force or Army. Um, but he was stationed in Germany at, at one point, was an orthopod. And randomly got a call one day that's like, hey, you're going to be attached to special forces uh, in, in like a forward operating basis in these fobs. And so he packed up his bag, said goodbye to his wife, and then disappeared for months on end. That was that was the that was the life uh, that that he chose or didn't choose or whatever based on his his um, branch of military that he was in. And so I think that's the next question that you need to answer for yourself is, is make some assumptions. Let's say, hey, yes, I get ortho. What does ortho in the Army look like? What does ortho in the Navy look like? What does ortho in the Air Force look like? What does is, what is general surgery in each of those branches look like? Where are they deployed? How often are they deployed? It's a different answer for each branch. And where are you going to be happiest? Would that be the number one consideration I need to take into account as I make this decision or is there something else I need to look at as well? Is what, what the number one consideration? What would best suit me? Like a thousand percent. Okay. I think that is the number one question that nobody asks themselves these days. What do, okay. what do I want? Right. What do I want as a human being? And then make decisions from there. Right. And right. understanding that as you progress down your algorithm of trying to figure out what you want to do with your life, Knowing and you're already making the 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 right assumptions that ortho is more competitive and this one is less competitive and 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 understanding that at its core, but not letting that dictate everything else along the way. I will do that. Um, but one more thing: the yeah. my recruiters, both <laughs> for the army and the navy, told me about some of the leadership training for both. Mm. Is there, a, is there a good way to navigate my duties there while also um, gaining opportunities to um, enrich my uh, profile as I apply, like, say, do research, get medical exposure um, during summer, during my, between my M1 and M2 year? How do I find the balance between the military training aspect of it and um, I guess the academic medical side of it, side of things. I'm not sure I understand the question. So I, I know that, okay, my recruiters told me about um, leadership training that I need to go through between my M1 and M2 year. So probably they're talking about COT, commissioned officer training or whatever right. it's called in each of the, the branches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of them, I think, is Bullock, if I remember now. Okay. I can't remember all these acronyms at the yeah. moment. But um, but yeah, how do I balance uh, the military uh, side of things on top of medical yeah. school? You don't. So you, you do what you're required to do, assuming you have the time to do it between your M1 and M2 year. Typically between M1 and M2, that's your last summer break uh, right. at, at most medical schools. And so the military is assuming that you're going to a medical school that's going to have that break and they're going to have planned training for you during that time. So my path, I did commissioned officer training before I started medical school and then I did training between my M1 and M2 year. Uh, just diff different, all kinds of different stuff. You may go to a medical school that doesn't have a summer between M1 and M2. And the military goes, okay, oh well, <laughs> we'll see you when you're done. And and so there, there's really no balance. It's really, what school do you, do you go to? Do they have the option? Do you have the option to have that summer off? And if you have that summer off, you do what the military wants you to do, and then if you have time to do other things, you do other things. So there's, there's really not balancing in that respect. You just, if you're at military training, then you're probably at military training, and it's going to be long days, and you're there hanging out, working. Thank you. I, yeah. Yeah, I think you've answered all my questions. Good. And now I've got a lot more that I'm just going to have to 
uh, I guess, think about myself now. <laughs> yeah, think about yeah. yourself. It's yeah. just because because what happens typically, I see this all the time, is students are making decisions based on some theoretical, like, well, if I want to do ortho, then my best option is the army, and I should do that because there's more options in army. And then you get to medical school, and you're like, well, shoot, I don't want to be an orthopod anymore. And then the residency that you want to do, the army is the worst choice. And so now you're like, well, shoot, I don't want to be in the army anymore because – because that's the residency options and that's not good. And I don't even like the army to begin with. I only did it because the ortho was what I thought I wanted to do. Like if you make decisions based on what, and, and obviously your hopes and desires and dreams may change too, not just residency, uh, but, but hopes, desires, whatever. But at least you're making decisions for yourself first and foremost, and, and that may change and that's okay but you are better equipped to handle the ramifications because you made the decisions based on the best evidence that you had at the time, based on what you wanted, not some game that you're trying to play to line up everything just right for you. All right? Thank you. Yes. Got it. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you.